Okay, so now we're going to go over some vocabulary. Find the degree of the polynomial and determine whether it is a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none of these. So let's just go over these prefixes. Mono in general normally refers to what number? One, One right? And then bi refers to like a bicycle has how many wheels? Two. Two. A tricycle has how many wheels? Three. Three, right? So we know these word, we know these prefixes already. So wouldn't it make sense then that a monomial is one term, a binomial is two terms, a trinomial is three terms, none of these is anything else, four, five, six, et cetera. How do you know you have a term? A term is separated from another term by either a plus sign or a minus sign. Okay, so that's how you know you have different terms. So that part is the bottom part. To find the degree, you need to find the largest exponent for any given term, which you can also, for if a given term has multiple exponents, you have to add the exponents together. So we'll get to that in the number 11. But for number 10, what invisible exponent is with the x there? One. One, right? So that's going to be the largest exponent because it's not there at all. But with that four, you could actually pretend that there is an x to the zero power. So if the four was alone, if the four X wasn't there and it was just a four, the degree would be zero because remember we talked earlier that X to the zero is just one. And so that's why you can actually pretend there's a fake X to the zero there because it is, it wouldn't actually change the problem. Yeah. Okay, but for this problem, you guys are right. The biggest exponent, if there's a one and a zero, the biggest exponent is one. And then is this a monomial, binomial or trinomial? A binomial. Binomial, good, because there's two terms. Awesome. Okay, so for number 11, you want to find the degree of each term, which if there's multiple variables, you need to add up the exponents. And then the biggest one overall is the degree of the polynomial. So what is the degree of the first term here in number 11? It's four. Four, right? Because the Z has an invisible one. So you add them together, you get four. What's the degree of the second term? Two. Two, right? Because they each have that invisible one. And the degree of the last term? Six. Good. So overall, what is the degree of the polynomial? Which one is biggest? Six. Six. Good. And then is this a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none of these? A trinomial. Good. Questions so far? Okay, so one more of those. What is the degree of this polynomial in number 12? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. the, first the first term has degree zero. The second term is degree four, so the bigger one is four. And then what is this, a monomial, binomial, trinomial? A binomial. Two terms, binomial. Okay, numbers 13 and 14. Even if the instructions were not there, so even if there were no words, right, how would you know to add in number 13 and multiply in number 14? Well, in number 13, there's an addition symbol in between the two. And mm -hmm. then number 14, the parentheses are next to each other, so you multiply. Very, very good. It is very easy to miss that. So it is very easy in a rush to maybe not see the plus sign here and to actually multiply in number 13 if you're not careful because you see the two sets of parentheses and you don't notice that there's a symbol between them. So, of course, if there's a plus sign, you have to add. If there's a minus sign, you have to subtract. If there's a division sign, you have to divide. But if there's nothing there, then and only then do you multiply. Very good, Caitlin. OK, so here we're going to add. And we only want to add like terms, right? So what can we add to the 9x to the fourth? We can add the negative 4x to the fourth, right? So what is that going to give us? 5x to the fourth. And then we have negative 6x plus 11x. So what is that going to give us? It'd be plus 5x. Very good. And then last but not least, what do we still need to include? You add this, add the 6. No. Perfect. Okay, so for number 14, we're going to go ahead and multiply. So we're going to distribute, and you can multiply this a few different ways. But one way to think about it is you're going to distribute the 6a to everything in the second set of parentheses. And then you're also going to distribute the three to everything in the second set of parentheses. But you can also think of it the other way if that's easier for you. 
You can also take the 3a squared, multiply it by the 6a plus 3, the minus 8a, by the 6a plus 3, the minus 6, by the 6a plus 3. You can think about it either way, as long as you ultimately multiply, you're going to get six terms total in your answer because you had two terms times three terms. Okay, so whatever way okay. you do it, doesn't matter. So we'll do it this way. If you go ahead and distribute, what do you get? So you get 18a to the third minus 48a squared minus 36a and then, um, plus 9a squared minus 24a minus 18. You guys are awesome. I can't even believe it. You're rotating back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I would think you guys know each other, but I'm guessing you actually don't. <laughs> no, <online no>. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So what can we do now? Combine the like terms. Good. So what like terms do we have here? Negative 48a squared and then 9a squared. Mm -hmm. So we bring down the 18a cubed because it doesn't combine with anything. Okay, then if we combine the squared terms, what does that give us? Uh, negative 39a mm -hmm. squared. Good, and then what else can we combine? Negative 36a minus 24a. Mm -hmm. What does that give us? Uh, you got a positive 60a, oh, I mean negative, so it's Very minus good. 60a. Very good. And then just bring down the negative 18. Love it. Nice job. Okay, seems like you guys are good with multiplication. Okay, how about this one, number 15? Uh, Any thoughts on what you want to do first? I always just multiply the stuff in the parentheses and then do the stuff on the outside. That's a great way to do it because you have to be careful with that four. That four is only going to get distributed into one set of parentheses. So sometimes if you try to deal with the four first, you might accidentally distribute the four twice. You might accidentally distribute it into both sets of parentheses, but then you've no longer multiplied by four. You've actually multiplied by four and then four again. So you've really multiplied by 16. So for that reason, I always do what you recommended, which is take care of the parentheses first and then at the end distribute the four because then you're less likely to kind of double multiply by four. So let's go ahead and just FOIL. So let's pretend the four isn't even there for a second. So FOIL, we're gonna do the first terms. So we're gonna do Y times two Y, which gives us what? Two Y squared. Two Y squared. Mm -hmm. And then the outer terms, Y times negative one. Negative one. Good. And then the inner terms, negative 9 times 2y. So minus 18y. Good. And then the last terms. 9 plus 9. Good. And then we do have some like terms, right? We can combine those middle terms to get what? Negative uh, 19y. Good. Negative 19y. Good. And then everything else stays the same. But of course, there's still that four in front, right? That was technically there the whole time. So now we have to distribute the four. So what do we get when we distribute the four? Eight y squared. Mm -hmm. uh, minus 76 y. Plus? Plus 36. Okay, so why don't you guys try, there's a bunch of FOIL problems here. Why don't you guys try 16 and 17? Okay, so what did you get for 16? I got 56x minus 39x minus 27. 56x squared. Oh, x squared. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you said minus 39x minus 27. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. And that middle term, you got it because you actually had a minus 63x and a plus 24x when you foiled and you combine mm -hmm. them to get that. Very good. Nice job, Marla. Okay, Caitlin, what did you get for 17? Um, 16x squared minus 49. Good. 
and you got that because your middle terms were plus 28x and minus 28x, which completely cancel out with each other, which is why you do not have an x term at all in your answer. Yes. Very good. And you could have actually known that was going to happen, right? Because this is an example of the difference of squares that you learned about later on in the module, right? If you think about it, when you factor this, you know it's going to be a sum and difference. So anytime you have a sum or difference of the same two terms being multiplied together, you know that your answer is going to have the middle terms cancel out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you can use FOIL there, or you can actually use that special rule that this you could have just gotten this answer by doing 4x quantity squared minus 7 quantity squared that they teach you about in the lesson. Either way works. Okay. Okay, what about number 18? Let's say we wanted to do FOIL. You wouldn't have to do FOIL, but let's say you chose to do FOIL because you could also use the shortcut that we just mentioned above. If you did FOIL, what is 3x times 3x? 9x squared. 9x squared. Okay. And then here comes the tricky part, right? We got to deal with the fractions. So what is 3x times 1 sixth? How would you work that out? I would do like 3 over 1 times 1 over 6. Mm -hmm. So then you could either cross cancel or you could multiply across and then simplify. Okay. So if you multiplied across, you would get 3x over 6, but then you would recognize what number goes into 3 and 6? 3. 3. So if you divide each of them by 3, what would your answer end up being? 1 half. Mm -hmm. 1 half. So then it would be 1 half x would be one way to write it. Or you could write like x over 2. Either way would be fine. Good. So that would be plus 1 half x. But then you're doing the same thing again. So we don't need to write it out twice. It's just going to be minus this time, right? Because 1 6 times 3x is the same as 3x times 1 6. But there's a negative. So minus 1 half x. Those are going to cancel out, which we already knew was going to happen, right? Because we had that sum and difference of the same two terms. And then we have to do 1 6 times 1 6. Well, negative 1 6 times 1 6. So we know our answer is going to be negative, And then we just have to multiply across. So what does that give us? It'd be negative 1 over 36. Exactly. So that would go right here. So I'll rewrite it without the middle terms. It would just be 9x squared minus 1 over 36. OK, for number 19, I want to know, can I just do x squared plus 12 squared like that? No, why not? Because the signs will, are supposed to be the same, but that would make them different. Yes, okay, so that rule only works um, if the signs are different, and then this would actually have to be a minus sign when yep. they're different. Yes, so you're right, you can't do that. Also, because this technically is x plus 12 squared, so it's x plus 12 times itself. So it's going to be something where you do FOIL and you're going to initially get four terms. So it's not just going to be two terms here because the middle terms aren't going to cancel. They might combine, but they're not going to cancel. Very good. So if we go ahead and do FOIL here, what do we get? X squared mm -hmm. um, plus 12x good. plus 12x. Good. And plus 144. Then we combine like terms. What is our final answer? X squared plus 24x plus 144. Okay, number 20. If we FOIL there, or you can use the shortcut rule either way, what would the answer be? X squared minus 100. Very good. Because if you did FOIL, that's your first and last term, but your middle two terms would have canceled out. Minus 10x plus 10x would have canceled out. Good. Or you could have simply done that x squared 
minus 10 squared because it was a sum and a difference of the same two terms being multiplied together. Very good. Okay, now we have, I think, a couple division problems, and then we'll move on to the factoring. So when you divide, the biggest thing you have to remember is that you're dividing the numerator, you're taking each term in the numerator and dividing by the denominator. So you're creating a bunch of fractions. So you're doing like negative 12 x to the fifth over 10 x to the sixth plus 70 x to the sixth over 10 x to the sixth. Yeah, that's how I always write it out. Mm -hmm. I always recommend writing it out. I know students don't like that and they want to do it as fast as possible. But I think even for me, if I don't write it out, I'm likely to miss something, right? So writing it out makes me more likely to see what's going on. And then basically you're creating a bunch of problems like what we just did, right? So what does that first fraction reduce down to? Six over five. Mm -hmm. The negative would still be there also, good. And then what about the X's? It would just be an X. Well, negative, negative, well, x to the negative one. It'd be x to the negative one, which means there would be an x where? Oh, I didn't see that. If um, you have a negative exponent, where does the x go? The denominator. The denominator. So there should be an x down here with the five. And then so be careful with that because if you put it in the top, of course, that's going to be wrong, right? Because there's a big difference between like dividing by x and if it's in the top, it's like multiplying by x. Obviously, that's not the same thing. Yeah. Okay, what about the second fraction? That one cancels out nicely. Mm -hmm. To just get um, plus seven. Plus seven. Good. Yeah, when I was first doing the review, like that answer didn't look right. It is right. So you can is, have answers that are little fractions and then also answers that are more like whole number terms. Yeah. Um, so that is correct. Don't do this. I see this a lot when I read these tests. Do not put the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I did. Over the 5x. That is not correct because this 7 is a standalone 7. So this is not correct. Yeah, it makes sense now. But at first, I was like, that just doesn't look right. So I had to add the The answers for these problems aren't going to be, like, satisfying, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, they're not going to look like anything clean or nice or normal. It's just going to be a bunch of terms being added or subtracted. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you guys try number 31? What does the first term become? Negative 1. Negative one, good, everything cancels out, but there's a negative sign. The next term, you do have a double negative, right? So it becomes a positive. What about the eight and 12? They reduce down to what? Uh, four, third. So you can divide each of them by four. Mm -hmm. So they reduce down to? Two thirds. Two thirds. Oh. But then you have your X. In and the, then you have your x where? The denominator. In the denominator. Very good. And then the last term is kind of strange. Nothing cancels except you don't really want to put plus and then have a negative, right? Because that's kind of redundant. So you just want to put minus 7 over 12x to the fourth. But otherwise, nothing canceled out there. 